Hello, welcome to Timberlake. My name is Mariah and we are so happy that you were able to join us today. In just a moment, we'll be getting started with our worship service, but first, here's a few things that we want you to know. Hey kids, take a parent or an adult and check out TimberlakeChurch.com slash kids online for all of our videos, activities, and lesson plans. Just because we can't meet in this building doesn't mean we still can't have church at home. And remember to check our social media, our Instagram, and our Facebook for fun activities throughout the week. What's up, students? To make sure we all stay connected during this season, check us out at TimberlakeChurch.com slash students and follow us on Instagram at TSM Castle Rock for weekly devotionals and updates on what we're gonna do. We would love to see how you're watching church today. So please take a picture and tag us. And for more information about what's happening here at Timberlake, follow us on social media and check out our website at TimberlakeChurch.com.
What's up, church? My name is Ryan. I'm the pastor here at Timberlake Castle Rock. And on behalf of our entire team, I would love to welcome you to Online Church. If you're just joining us for the first time, I'm glad that you found us. Generally, we meet on Sundays, but we're doing church just a little bit differently today. Uh, or rather, let me say it like this, we're doing a church service just a little bit differently today. Normally, I would tell you that I hope you feel at home in this house, uh, but we're in your home, so, so that's on you. Thanks for welcoming us into your home today. Uh, it's truly incredible to be able to connect in this, uh, this way, this avenue, this forum, right? You and I are the church. It's just that it's customary to attend a building on Sunday morning. So we're starting a new normal, right? And I hope that you enjoy it, but even more than that, I hope that you engage with it. Whether that's from your home, it's from your car, your work, the gym, maybe you're curled up in bed right now with, with blankets and a hot cup of coffee. That's what I hope you're doing, right? I hope that you'll continue to take this hour or so and, and, and do church with us each week. And it, as long as this thing lasts, right? We don't know. Who knows? With the way that things are changing literally every single day, we want to change with it. And we'll do, we'll do everything that we can on, on our side uh, to help you and to, to help our church family keep moving and progressing. We don't believe that this thing stops because we're stuck at home, right? Use this time to worship with us. Use this time to lead you and your family. Use this time to, to jump onto our online kids forum and teach and lead your kids each week. We've got some incredible resources for you that I hope that you'll take advantage of. Just because we're missing out on physical worship doesn't mean that we need to miss out on what God is wanting to do in our lives, right? I wanted to... Uh, kind of kick this new norm off by talking about the idea of hope and future. If you've downloaded the, the Timberlake or if you haven't downloaded the Timberlake app, go on the app store on your, on your phone or on your iPad and download the Timberlake app, select Castle Rock as your campus and each week today included you'll be able to follow along with fill in the blanks and notes and and all the scripture that we'll go through is right there in your hands be sure to download that last week we talked about fear and anxiety and really the panic that's setting in all around the world i want to found today on one verse specifically that comes from the book of jeremiah Maybe you've heard it before. It's one of my favorite verses. It's one of the most well-known passages. I love this, this, this verse because it's soaked and it's saturated in hope for our future. In Jeremiah chapter 29, the Israelites have been exiled and they're living in Babylon and the Babylonians are ruling over them. And it's this group of people that was hurting and they're lost and they're confused and they're broken and, and Jeremiah writes this letter to the exiled nation telling them to pray and believe for the prosperity of the city that they're in. Remember they're exiled, they're in a place that's that's not their own. They're outside of their norm, they're outside of their standard, much like most of us are right now. And God tells them to build a house, settle down and pray for peace and prosperity for what's about to come, right? And then we get to verse 11. And it says, For I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. I want to look at the last part of that passage. Not the, not the part that talks about prosperity, right? Like, listen, we'll, we'll get through this thing. Right? We know that we'll get through this thing. I believe that when all of this is said and done, we'll be better off than when it started. But it's because of this last part of the passage that I think that we can respond in a specific way. For I know the plans that I have for you, plans to give you hope in a future. This is being written to a defeated group of people. Let me ask you this. Do you feel a little defeated right now? I think humanity as a whole feels a little defeated right now, maybe a little deflated, maybe a little down. 
I think the key in this in, in this situation that we're in is figuring out how we respond to God, even in a promise that, that we can apply to our lives even now, today. Let's look at Jesus and consider what he said. It says this in Luke 17. It says, Now on his way to Jerusalem, Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. And as he was going into a village, two men who had leprosy met him. They stood at a distance. They called out in a loud voice, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. When he saw them, he said, Go, show yourself to the priest. And as they went, they were cleansed. One of them, when he saw that he was healed, came back, praising God in a loud voice. He threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him, and he was a Samaritan. Jesus asked, We're not all ten cleansed. Where are the other nine? Has no one returned to give praise to God except this one foreigner, the the Samaritan? Then he said to him, rise and go. Your faith has made you well. So you have Jesus walking between these two cities with very different beliefs. And it's the Samaritan, the, the foreigner, the person who is most on the outside that responds to Jesus. They call out to him, asking for mercy on their lives. What's wild is that these men say, they say, Jesus, Master. They call him Master. That word in this specific passage is translated from the Greek word, epistata. Outside of this passage alone, the only people that use that word are Jesus' disciples. Nobody in Scripture, nobody throughout the Gospels refers to him as epistata, as Master, other than the disciples. See, they were already indicating faith in him. They knew who he was. They knew what he was about. All, tw- or all ten of these, these, these men go to the priests. We assume that all are healed. It says that they were cleansed. But only one returns back to Jesus. It was his automated response. His instinct, if you will. All ten are healed on the way back to the priest, and yet one returns back to Jesus. Jesus' response to this this one is that his faithfulness made him well. His faithfulness is demonstrated in two ways. Number one, I think that it's this, this recognition that mercy has come from Jesus. The second thing is that that it's his thankfulness, right? That his thankfulness shows a healing of something deeper than than flesh healing. Here's your key idea today. I I think it's a very simple one. Your key idea is, is, is this. It's that I am blessed. I'm blessed, right? So I think that today we have two realities that we're living in. One should take priority. Reality number one is that we are living in a crisis, right? We know that. Our world is in a crisis. Look around you. Our world is in a crisis. The second reality is that we are so unbelievably blessed, right? So we have to ask ourselves, if there are two realities that we're living in, which one do we focus on? I think one of my favorite things that's that's happening all around the world right now is what's happening uh, with some Italians in, in Italy, that they're focusing on something different. Have you seen the videos of the people that are, uh, that are quarantined in their apartment buildings? So they're standing out on their balconies and they're, and they're singing together. And the city streets are just being flooded by voices. It's not angry. It's not hate. It's not, it's not fear or panic. It's joy. And they're singing together. Or there's this one video of this guy and he's, he's sitting out on his balcony. He's playing his keyboard and there's a camera behind him. And it's kind of filming him play and, And then the camera pans over and and balconies over, there's a man playing saxophone and they're playing together. It's weird because they're playing the theme song to uh, to, to, to Titanic, which is an odd choice, right? But the camera looks back and it it shows these balconies uh, across the street on the apartment across the street and, and just lined with stories of balconies. But all these balconies are filled with people. People are quarantined to their, their, uh, to their apartments and and the guy's playing the song and 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 he raises his hand and when he raises his hand up uh, everybody cheers for him 
It's truly incredible. It's this, this beautiful picture of a blessed reality. Right? So if God is blessing us, if God is blessing us in this extremely dark time, what is our response to God's blessing? How do we look past our current situation? One that is evolving and changing in what seems to be every 30 minutes of every single day, right? How do we look past what's happening now with an understanding that, that Christ was at work before all this started, that Christ is at work right now during this, and that Christ is still going to be work, at work when all this mess is done? That Christianity is, is not about us repaying God. It's about us responding to God. Our gratitude to God is revealed in our response to Him. So how do we do it? I've got five quick thoughts for you today. The first one is this. Here's how we respond. We honor God in our worship. Honor God in our worship. For the foreseeable future, we are, we are doing solely online worship. We've got some really great ideas coming that I cannot wait to share with you. But, but for the time being, we are solely online worship. This past week, the, the band was in, and, um, and they got set up, and they began to uh, record this, this worship set, hopefully, that you were involved in a few minutes ago. And there's cameras set up, but there are no people in the, in the seats, right? The room is empty. And yet, the presence of God was so thick in this, in this room filled with praise, right? Filled with gratitude, filled with, with worship. To worship is the expression of our thankfulness to God. It's a response to something. Worship happened in an empty room this week so that we could have worship online today. But that worship is us honoring God. It's our response to Him. It's us giving back to God. It's us exalting God. where We're pointing everything that we have towards Him. Psalm chapter 100 says, it says, Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before Him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It's He who has made us, and we are His. We are His people. These scriptures filled with passages that over and over again instruct us to worship. But it's not because God needs the worship. It's because it's a, a, a revelation of our heart and the reality is that I need my worship. I am the beneficiary of my worship to God, my response to God. Over the next few weeks, you'll probably have to break down some, some walls of awkwardness, right? For as long as this thing lasts, your family's probably going to hear you sing, right? But join in, participate with us. Be examples to your kids. Close your eyes. Sing along with the team as we honor God through this season of life that we're in. We can honor God through this season of life we're in, right? Here's number two. We honor God when we share my God story. This is where we help other people come to know Jesus. Well, how do I do that when I'm not allowed to speak to people, right? Like we're not technically allowed to be speaking. I was having a conversation this past week with somebody and and I asked them this question, what's the, what's the biggest variable to the 2020 coronavirus and all the other pandemics throughout history? What's the, what's the one blaring thing that we have that we've never had before in something so big? Social media, right? We are more connected now than we have ever been before. We don't need to have conversations face to face to share our God story. In fact, for me, I prefer all my communication to be done digitally, right? I, I was looking this past week because my, uh, my phone was full. Like, there was no more storage left on my phone. I couldn't take a picture. It was horrible. So I'm trying to figure out how to delete stuff. And I found out that my text message thread with my wife was uh, 5 gigs of my phone. It's literally taking up 8% of my phone. Just my text message thread, right? I love digital communication. We have the ability to share valuable things. The question is, what will we choose to share? Obviously, this transcends our current reality, but, but in the now, are we willing to create uh, opportunities to share our story? Are we willing to be creative with our story, or rather, God's story in and through us? First Peter 
chapter 3, it says, But in your hearts, revere Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. But do this with gentleness and respect. What I love about this passage is the part that says, be prepared. I think it's fitting to our life right now because we are in a season or a mindset or a mode of preparation, right? Like all we're thinking about is how we prepare. We're filling our refrigerators, we're, we're filling our food pantries, we're filling our toilet paper rolls, right? This says, be prepared with gentleness and respect to do what? To share the story of Christ. How do we do that now? We adjust. We adjust because God wins in the end of this. I want my story to consistently include his story. Whether I'm telling it from a stage, whether I'm telling it through a computer screen, a phone screen, a computer screen, whatever that is. Whether I'm quarantined in my house with a three-year-old and I'm preaching to them. I want my story to consistently convey his story. I don't want to stop because we have social distancing, right? Here's number three. You want to honor God, pay it forward. Pay it forward. Matthew chapter 25 says, For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. I had a friend last week on Facebook post to his uh, to his timeline, and and he simply made this message that, that said, uh, if anybody is stuck at home, they're, they're sick or they're elderly and they can't get out of their house uh, to go to the grocery store. He said, let me know so that I can help. And of course, he ended this, this post by saying, what a weird time to be alive, right? Like how often do we post things like that online? But it was simple. It was kind. It was selfless. We sat down this past week and we started talking about the ways that the church can be involved and, and, and reach out into our community. My brain is constantly thinking, how can I be involved in help through this thing that's happening right now? Find ways to be small lights in people's dark world, right? As Christ followers, let's show the world what Christ looks like. People are hurting. People are sick. People are finding financial struggle. People are losing their jobs right now. How can we step up our game as believers? Here's what I love about the logistics of, of salvation. And I know that's a weird sentence. I don't think that we, we talk about it like that very frequently. But we don't get to gain or earn salvation through our good works. right? We can't complete enough tasks or help enough hurting people that all of a sudden we're rewarded with heaven. However, it's it's... It's in those things that people see Christ in us. The Christ that gave it forward first by dying on a cross for our sins so that we can have eternal life. Here's number four. We, honor, we want to honor God. We, we, we reinvest in God's work. How do we respond to God's work in our life? We invest in the things that he's doing. We invest in the things that God cares about. About. See, here's our goal in our walk with Christ to constantly be taking steps forward, right? Forward and forward and forward. In every area of our faith walk, just get better. And when we make mistakes, we get knocked backwards, we get up and we take a step forward and we take a step forward. God's not calling you to, to give first, He's already given. God's calling you to respond. Our investment is our response in gratitude to something that God has already given to us. Let me revisit the key idea. We're blessed, church. We're blessed, right? Come on, right there at your home. Maybe this is, maybe this is weird or uncomfortable, but I just want you to think for a second on the things that you're blessed with, on the things that God blesses you with, the things your family is blessed with. How can we respond to the way that God has blessed us? Deuteronomy chapter 14 says the purpose of tithing is to teach you to always put God first in your life. So listen, God has already put us first, right? He's already put us first. Are you willing to do the same in every aspect of your life? Part of doing life and, and, and church differently 
even affects the way that we give back to God through our tithes. At the end of service today, at the end of this message, Pastor Corey will give you some some better instructions for the time being and how we uh, still participate with our generosity, with our tithes, with our, with our offerings. They're going to be done through the mail. They're done online through the Timberlake app. Some of you, of course, already do that. I would encourage you to take a step forward in the way that you invest in what God is doing. Take a step forward in this aspect of your faith journey, trusting that God is faithful to us, listening to what he tells us to do to better our lives so that we can further and bless and and grow and build the kingdom of God. Here's the fifth thing, and, and, and I'll close with this. We want to honor God. Never forget what Jesus has done for me. Through all of this, don't forget what Jesus has already done. Remember, this is... This is all about the blessing that we have, right? We're going to get through this thing. And we know that we're going to get through this. This will end. We will eventually bounce back, right? Like nobody is still in fear of the 1918 Spanish influenza, right? Like we get through these things. And I said it earlier, I truly believe with everything in me that we'll get through this thing and we'll get through this thing better than when we started, right? Because Jesus is at work. He's been at work, he's at work now, and he's going to keep being at work. Amen? Come on, we pray with you. Jesus, thank you so much for caring about us. God, thank you for being so much at work in our lives. God, for caring about the things we care about. God, for walking through this situation and this struggle with us. God, I pray that you would help us to see that to even greater lengths, bigger aspects in our life, God that you would present yourself in bigger ways, in stronger ways. God, even in this situation, help us to be a people that rests in your faithfulness to us, that we believe that you are who you say you are and you're going to continue to be who you say you are. There at your home, if, if, if you're listening to this message and I don't know where you're at in your, your faith journey, I don't know if... You just stumbled upon us today. If you're a regular church member, I don't, I don't know where you're at right now. But one of the cool things about the logistics of salvation are that there are no prerequisites. There are no qualifiers. Jesus just comes in and he says, I want to have a relationship with you. And maybe you're listening to this today and you don't have a relationship with Jesus. That's the first part of any of this. How do we honor God? We take a step in our relationship with him. And maybe today your first step is to say, yeah, I would love a relationship with Jesus. All you have to do right there, your, your, your seat, your couch, your home, wherever you're at right now, just begin to pray this prayer. You say, Jesus, thank you for salvation. God, thank you for forgiveness. Thank you for sending your son to die on a cross for my forgiveness. Say, God, come into my life, come into my heart, Change me and shape me and build me to be the person that you have called me to be. And then just say thank you to him. Because what's happening right now, at your home, at your work, in your car, wherever you're listening, what's happening right now is the greatest thing that will ever happen in your life. Jesus, thank you so much once again for your faithfulness. God, I pray through this season that you would help us to recognize that you are in fact in control. God, that you do care about us, that you are blessing us even through this this messy situation. God, I pray right now that you would calm nerves, that you would calm unsettlement, that you would calm fears and anxiety, unrest, God, panic. God, that you would help us trust in who you are, believe in who you are. God, keep us safe, keep us healthy, build a hedge of protection around us like we have never experienced before. And God, in this moment, we will say thank you for what you've done. God, thank you for what you're doing. God, thanks for what you're about to do. We are so excited for our future, God. That is where our hope lies today. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. 
Oh, hey, church, I love you. I believe in you. I'm praying for you. I'm praying for your safety. I'm praying for your health. Please let us know if we can do anything. Stay tuned in. Get on social media. Uh, repost, follow, like, share everything that you can think of so that we can continue to push the name of Jesus. Stay tuned in. Pastor Corey has a few instructions for you. I cannot wait to see you again. I love you. Talk to you later. Well, hey, thanks again for joining us today for our first ever online service. I hope you know how much we're praying for you. And if there's anything we can do for you at all, please don't hesitate to ask. You know, we still have the opportunity to be the church together, even though we're all watching this in different places. And that means we still have the opportunity to come together and be faithful and generous and to support the mission of our church. So you can give today. And there's four ways you can do that. You can go to TimberlakeChurch.com slash give, and there should be a link right below. You can also go to the Timberlake app, and you can give right within the app. You can also text TimberlakeCR to 77977, and then follow the prompts that follow. And then you can also just send a check in the mail. Again, thank you so much for your generosity. Thank you for joining us today. I hope you check out the kids and the student ministry resources on the website, and I hope you have a great rest of your week. We'll see you next time.